This is May's Book 2, Chapter 8, Part 3. We snuck into burlesque shows in San Francisco. We rode the BART train to either end without paying. We hopped the turnstiles. She made me feel like a kid again, Kel. She approached the world like a child, and I got off on her idiosyncrasies. She always had to sit in the window seat, and she would wipe the glass clean with her arm, then steam it with her breath and wipe it again, then let the side of her face press into the glass and watch the world go by. She didn't want to talk on the train, and when we dove into the darkness and tunneled under the bay, she lifted her head and burrowed into my shoulder, and I put my arm around her and held her, feeling the warmth of her breath on my neck. I took her to Chinatown, where we listened to the people, and not knowing Chinese made it all the more magical. And the people were busy and kind and in constant motion. Feeling lucky, we found a temple where we lit incense for the smiling Buddha and prayed to many gods. We walked into the bakeries for sticky buns. If she was feeling shaky, we could go over by the Civic Center, Market Street, or the Public Library, where there was any one of a few Central Americans she could do the secret handshakes exchanging sawbucks for Norcos, or Xanax bars, or Somas, or Methadone at the very least, to keep her steady, on or above the baseline. <clears throat> I would wait at the donut shop or sometimes just go with her. It could all happen in a second. They would walk alongside us and talk about next to nothing or ask her where she's been or not or tell her of something good coming their way soon, maybe some Percocets or pins. I was amazed by her almost encyclopedic knowledge of pharmaceuticals and street trade. I hadn't known any of our kind to be addicted and found the whole thing quite intriguing. Not like you would ever want to be involved. The kneading and waiting and scoring and euphoria. All that nodding and sweating and kneading and waiting. All that waiting and scoring and euphoria and numbness and aching and feeling and nodding and sleeping and dying only to awaken and do it all over again. No thanks. The repetitive motion was demeaning. <clears throat> all that she was, my pale blue, was underground like the subway, latent for a chance to arise, a lemon or lime on the vine that never turned yellow, never turned green, never fell but just clung to the vine of the trade, of the street, of the drug, of the need, of the weight, of the nod off the score.